This is um, how to assemble a terminal plate assembly when you're preparing to install a compressor. So you need to use your imagination. This is now on a compressor. These are the papers National Compressor ships with the compressor so you can see how this should be laid out. I want you to pay special attention to the different nuts and what they mean. Okay, and we'll go through it step by step. First, when you receive the compressor, you'll get a compressor with a bare terminal plate and you'll get a kit. The terminal kit will have everything in it necessary to assemble. The only thing you have to determine is whether it's part wind or across the line. Today we're going to do a part wind 208 wiring setup. The jumper setup, preparing for the wiring. First thing you have to do is you have to pull the sheet and take a look at how it's set up. And then you start to do the assembly. So you're going to assemble by putting your jumpers on on four, five, and six. And then you're going to put your nuts on. What's important is that you pay attention to the way this is set up and you don't decide to just look at it and do it the way it appears rather than the way it should be. So what's very, very important is on part one, you need to have a separate set of extensions, okay? And the extensions are set up to be in the middle. This plate is actually upside down from what you would see on the compressor. You would see it set up this way. Okay. Now, put your jumpers on the bottom, you put your connectors here, you put your phase board, and then your one, two, and three connectors on your primary contactor. We're gonna go through it only because it's crucial for you to understand how this works and why, why I'll be doing what I'm doing. So what happens in most cases, when they do the assembly, they, put, they have to put these on and they screw them on the center. What they don't do is follow the instructions on that first page I showed you. And what that instruction means is you gotta put a jam nut. If you don't put a jam nut, these things will not be tightened. They could vibrate, they can loosen a little bit, they can turn a little bit, and it will all affect the contact of the secondary contactor. So this gets run down almost to the bottom. You don't tighten it against the bottom nut. All of these nuts are pre-torqued and should never be touched. When you're handling this and you're doing what I'm doing, for the purpose of it is I'm doing this for speed. You should be using a, um, a hand, a box wrench. And if you're using a socket, you do it very gingerly when you send it down. You don't run it, you don't use power tools on it because uh, if you use a power screwdriver, it's gotta be set very low. So you don't wanna, you don't wanna lock against the nut. And then when you have to back it off, you can loosen this. If you loosen this, you're gonna get a leak. I can tell you now, I had people in the field call and say the terminal plate's leak. And after I find out what happened is, they had assembled it and realized they had to take it apart to do something. When they took it all apart, so that before they reassembled it again for the wiring or whatever their reason was, everything was loose. So you don't want to touch these. These are preset, and once they're set, they can't be disturbed. All right, so we have all this down, and it's down to the bottom. Now what you're going to do is you're going to put these on, and you're going to run these in as far as they go. Now to show you, when you run them in, and you run them down, as far as they go, they do not go to the nut. The nut is on the bottom. Now you have to back this up against that and you're gonna lock it. The one thing before you lock it and you get all three of these on and you run them down, what you have to do, you have to take the Bakelite 
just slow things a little bit. There's no sense in really running it all the way down real tight because the, the lock nut will hold them. But what happens with this is in most cases, um, when you're putting it on, one can be tighter than the other. So here's what I have happen over and over, okay? And it's, it's foolish because you guys in the field of techs and you really know what you're doing, you just have to think. So they turn around, they put this on, they line it up, they'll tap it down. I'm not gonna tap it all the way down for a reason. And then you look at this, this is the way this thing sits right now. It's not touching over there, it's lower here. And when you tighten it from the outside, looking this way, before you put this on, it's gonna look okay, but it's gonna be bowed. Okay, if it's bowed, that means it's not tight all the way down and it's not dead even. Not being even causes stress on this board, can crack it, it can cause an arc, and actually cause an overheating because it's not tight. If you look at this one, this one is actually loose. It's, it's not tight at all. That will cause arcing in the threads, oxidation, and failure. So you run them down, when you get them, when you get them, it's this way, so it's hard to see your angle. So you're going to put something across to make sure it's dead even. However you do it, that's the way you're going to do it to make sure it's dead even. Once you get them all even, put your baker right on. That looks great. Is that great? The baker light's not even all the way down. And, um, but from the outside, remember you're assembling it this way. So this is what I see sometimes ends up coming in. And what comes in is a compressor we supply, assembled like this. It's failed. And it's failed because of this. But the compressor's not bad. When you take the, the terminal plate off and turn it around, it's like this, brand new. And the compressor's good. What it did is it failed the terminal plate. That's a tremendous cost to everyone, including my company, having to take a compressor that has nothing wrong with it, all because it wasn't assembled correctly. So this is more important than you can imagine doing this. So you gotta have this done. You look at it now, it's nice and even. You now take this, you put it underneath, you run these up by finger first, because they'll go up real nice and easy. And then what you do is you put a wrench behind it and you'll lock it. And you'll do it on all three. Every one of these right now, watch how much I'm turning that. That's locked. So now you're set to put the next set. This one is real simple. This just goes over it. You have this ready. Now this goes in place. And once you do that, you set your connectors. You put your connectors in, you put your nuts on, and you tighten them. Okay, with every compressor, the national compressor, you get a torque spec. You can go to the, uh, the four, six, eight cylinder. You can go down to the, um, the terminal assembly bolts, terminal plate, and terminal nuts. It tells you 50 inch pounds, and that's all you put on all of them. And you're, you're done with that. So here's your plate, here's the way it works. Uh, you do have an IMP board that sits here, you put on, you gotta put the cellophane behind it, insulator, and this is the complete board, done, with the module connected. Again, the side of it is absolutely important. And without doing that, you'll end up having a failure. 